pulling Nigeria from the brink. The growing consensus and nationalistic feeling in the country today is that Nigeria is on the brink and at the risk of a calamitous fall. Whether she will survive depends on who you ask. The above was recently put in context by Mr. John Campbell and Robert Rothberg in their essay entitled, The Giant of Africa is Falling, where they argued quite convincingly that Nigeria has joined the growing number of failed states in the world and run the risk of morphing into a collapsed state in the absence of an ingenious effort in statescraft. Campbell and Rothberg's essay, however, was only a reality check for millions of Nigerians who have lived through this deleterious reality in recent years. Indeed, if a nation's first obligation to its citizens is to provide for their security and maintain a monopoly on the use of violence, then Nigeria has failed, as the opposite is the state of the country today. At no time in our history, particularly for people of my generation, did we have it this bad. From the east to the north, and from the south to the west, Nigeria battles for its soul under the weight of the hydra-headed monster of insecurity, economic decline, corruption, and a growing threat to her territorial sovereignty. The fallout is that many Nigerians have suddenly lost confidence and hope in the idea of the Nigerian state as a place where their dreams and aspirations can come to fruition. The famous or infamous Plan B, an escapist alternative, which leaves the country at the risk of brain drain, is unfortunately now the option of choice for a disillusioned citizenry. Efforts to restructure the country through concession review is received with skepticism and suspicion. For many, the solution of the marriage of 1914 along ethnic through regional lines has become fashionable. Whether that is the enduring solution would however remain an endless debate. But what is clear to me is that Nigeria's problem is essentially one of poor leadership. In the 60 years of our independence, we have watched the great potential and prospect of the young Nigerian states frittered away. Yet, Nigeria can still be saved and pulled from the brink through a people-led reconstruction effort. For that hope to be lived, however, our collective effort as citizens, whether as leaders or followers, cannot be overemphasized. In an atmosphere of ethnic recriminations and mutual suspicions in a multi-ethnic republic, little or no consensus can be forged upon which a strong nation can be erected. Rwandans have shown a great example of how a people can rise from the crucible to build a strong nation that inspires hope, pride, and patriotism in its peoples. I believe Nigeria can also reenact the Rwandan example. All it takes is for the people and their government to come together in the belief that their country can work again. This would no doubt require a dynamic, pragmatic, and emotionally intelligent leadership, which the next Nigerian president must possess as when the country survives until the next election. Happily, Nigeria and Nigerians are famous for their resilience and ability to rise from the ashes at particularly turbulent times. I believe we can draw from this world of resilience to believe that we will bounce back again. Yet, we do not have all the time in the world. Nigeria will be great again. Where is Buhari? <laughs> can Tinubu do something? How long are we going to be at this stage? It's heartbreaking when you see someone you love, when you, somebody that is basically, who, you look at yourself and I'm like, am I going, to, going anywhere? Am I going to get better than this? I was telling my professor that I don't think we are going to get any better than this. I think we are actually stuck here because I don't see the light. I don't see the way out. I don't see any difference that is going to happen because everything is falling apart. Nobody is doing anything. And God help us. Are we going to continue like this? You know, it's, it's very beautiful to talk about resilience and all of that. But I think it's somewhat... Um, an indictment on the mental well-being of people. At a point in time, it expire, use, right? All oh, right. To expire go. now. So one, you know, we the the cry of the average Nigerian is not to, it's not out of reach. We don't want you know? yachts. Just the we don't basic, want expensive things. The basic things. And you know, one can keep. I'm a social. I'm a development consultant. So in my work, we try to empower people to, you know, stand 
give you the oh. tools you need to have to create a good life for yourself. But the truth is there is an overriding and overarching responsibility that political leadership has to ensure, you know, to create, you know, wealth, it sounds like a cliche, yes. but an enabling environment mm -hmm. for people to thrive, particularly young people. So a, a lot of times, and you know, the, the example you gave in Rwanda, mm -hmm. I was at a conference about three years ago in yeah. Egypt. I met the, the Minister of Youth Affairs okay. in Rwanda. As a matter of fact, that conference was for young people. To my great shock, Nigerian delegates were the oldest in age. Yeah, they'll now be seen at the back. Then in go. small so time, they'll you not know, leave the place it, it, and go it, back it, to your it, talk it, it and gives you, it They let the youth wonder. at home. It makes you wonder and ask, like you keep asking. Let us Where call out way forward, Buari. You know. Let us call out Tinubu. Buari will not answer me. No, let's call Tinubu. He situation. wants to come back and be president no, 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 now. No, no, no. He has he, has he actually, Until let us you know, start saying it careful. now, so no, that no, no, no. he will hear. I think we need to be careful in you know the things we say. A lot of things are said under speculation. Uh, Tinubu is country. a private citizen, and okay. until we'll, he comes we'll out to now. say, I'm co "I mean, he's well within his rights." Of course, to but we want to be Nigerian. here. We to come. Well, but <laughs> you know, we uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> take, take the break. I, I think I think okay. what Ejeme is saying is that these are principal people who played a role mm. in how we got here. And yes, he's a private citizen and all that, but he's an he's an elder statesman. He's the uh, you know, uh, icon of the party and the country mm -hmm. is gradually descending into whatever it is. And so calling out these people is, look, you were there, you helped us get here, come out. What do we need to do to mm -hmm. come back from where we are going? Because it's, we are really, really descending into anarchy. I mean, I hear of people being at oh, home yeah. and we people knocking help. on their doors and taking people, mm -hmm. grown men, you know, call from them their by their names. And come out and say something. Come out and help. Kidnapped, and we're not bringing him back. The money has been taken. It's every single day. Um, um, people are pushing. People are seeing that there's no, there's no punishment for any crime anymore. And so, any everybody is going into one form of crime or the other. Yeah. Uh, as a bit to well get by. Probably is actually. You even mentioned the mental health. Maybe that's the way the person feels that. Um, I need to exert my own anger and all that. And I I, I, I feel bad that we sound like a broken record on the mm. I mean, say, Oh I my think god, I how this say, particular I said, how long are we going to say in this? Various <laughs> forms every other week that we come here and we we, we still say the same thing. It's it, it's my problem is the sense of helplessness mm. and hopelessness. True. I completely I have agree never with been you. one to say I want a second passport, never. But the, I am so much under pressure, honestly, to look for a second passport because I can't see. The I really can't see. So the real. I really can't see where we're going to. 2023 is already up in arms. We're already seeing what's going on um, in 2020, 2021. So I'm wondering that, you know, all the political machinations are on are not even being played out for the good of the country. Mm. It's not as if what is being calculated right now is how in 2023 do we help Nigeria um, to get my to point Nigeria exactly, now, United, comfort. That uh, is Africa why Republic. I am saying, <laughs> Tinubu, can you hear us? We want. Nigeria to develop. As you're coming well, well, in with whatever I, I, again, dream or again, plan you I, want, again, I don't any think... presidential candidate that wants to come in 2020 should know what we want. We want him to work on security. We want to, requesting for roads to be things of the past. Electricity. We see we must make our demands known. Like Comfort has said, but we've been coming know. here, we've been singing the same songs, mm -hmm. but there's only so much Comfort, Lion, Mikemka, and advocacy can do. Let us call the power brokers. Let, them, let us tell them exactly what we want. When I was coming here, I said to myself, if I could see Tinubu, or if I could see Bode George, if I could sit in a room with APC and PDP, they are the powers that be. I know. If I want any change in this country, I must get these two people to actually do something to make the change. I will tell them, see, we know you are going to be the next president, either APC or PDP. But what we want from you is a deputy, a vice president that is below the age of 60. If you can even manage below 50, We'll give it to him. Then we want our ministers too to be younger. We can actually state these things, and that is what I think advocacy can do. The advocate can do. I, I we can totally, state I, clearly I, I, what I totally, we want totally from these powers that be. I totally agree with you, but the thing is this: um, I don't think um, the the, the uh, we've not got into the politicking of 2023 yet, officially at least, officially. You understand? So for now, I think uh, um, focusing on the subject of um, what we are actually discussing. 
Um, what actually strikes me about um, um, uh, Campbell and Rothbeck's essay is that it's actually a, a, a confirmation of a, a prediction that was made of a study that was made 15 years ago by the United States um, Council of Intelligence, where they said that in the next 15 years that Nigeria was going to collapse. Mm -hmm. This was a study conducted in 2005. So it's so, I don't know if it's so coincidental, I don't know, but 2020, 2021, we're actually living that um, reality. Mm. So that means they had looked at certain indicators. Of course, you can follow the breadcrumbs yes. and tell, yes. it's not rocket what science, not rocket science. I mean, because yes. the pulse of the people at any given time, and don't mm -hmm. forget, society is built to deteriorate. Okay. And that's why we put machinery in place so to maintain, to, yes. all right, so yes. that it doesn't get to the worst mm, possible states. state it can, be. it can be. But, you know, our country is like a, 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 a truck on autopilot without a driver and without brakes. So, and I'm not particularly pointing fingers at the individuals in government. Yes, they have a role to play. As a sure. matter of fact, we entrusted our destinies in their Which hands the day we gave them the mandate to sit in the house or sit in the executive or to, you know, mm. take up uh, 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 appointive positions. Yes, exactly. But the mm. truth is, and it really, it's... It's a very unhappy phenomenon that we keep trying to draw this responsibility back to the people and say, oh, it's not just government, it's the people. A child does not raise themselves. Uh -huh. mm. You need parents mm -hmm. in a home to oversee yeah, the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. upbringing of a child. Uh, when we have mm -hmm. a government that works, Everything will then work. every yes. empowerment you give to the people, you will see it will work. You know the fruit of it. So it really <laughs> Raymond, is. Sad. Raymond, can I just pick up on something you said? You you said um, it's not the season for politics, but you see that's what has also been killing us. We we keep saying it's not we keep, the season. Wait, Meanwhile, wait. the politicians and the people who want this power more, more, more than me and you are already doing it. Yeah, we're ahead of us. It's on board or not. So for me, I think every opportunity mm. that we yeah, have. You, no, your, let's your tell them what we want. If you want to come in 2023, this is what and we the want. Way you pull Nigeria from the brink is talking to these people, sounding now. it out at any given point in time. It, you do understand? It's not just for me reading what John Campbell said 15 years ago. We have it now. We have the situation now. And we're and going in to 2023. Years, we're going to change. In fact, in the next year, they're going to start talking about the people who are going to come and so sit it's on now this that thing. we make so our this demand. Is time to advocate. Well, and you hear me saying, I, you hear me saying, APC, PDP, they will be the ones to win. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's speak in our reality. APC or PDP would win presidency come 2023. But now, since we know that this is what we, there this could, is what there going could very well be a true oh, until then, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll, well, it's true, but I'll be here <laughs> now. On that premise that we know that it's either going to be APC or PDP, what do we want from these people? Mm. Let's speak up now. Let's say it loud and clear now. Let's amass the tools that we have, social media. Young people, the, 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 uh, what do I say, the black streets of Twitter. Hmm. Let's say it every day. Let the advocates stand here and say, okay, the next president, so this is what we want. The next um, vice president, this, this is what is we want. The next set of ministers, mm -hmm. this is what we want. Mm -hmm. We have to keep saying it loud and clear. I That's mean, the only way we can possibly have... For have us two to also participate. Right, correct. For us That's to also exactly participate. The yes. Not, because correct. we can also be a part of that correct. process. Because you see, really political it's power is never given. It is always taken. Exactly. So take young exactly. people <laughs> have to come up. Now, the truth is, Politics is, you know, it's a game of time and chance. Now, I might sit where I am. I have everything it takes to be a senator. But I'm saying to myself, if I come out now, I won't win. No, come out first. Uh, my brother. Get into the ring. <laughs> okay. Contest. Well, Do what needs to be done. At, well, at the right time, so you just out. may find yourself. Come sure. out now. Sure. Indeed, society's challenges are never ending. Hence, they need to keep advocating in our private spaces with the hope that it all coalesces into improved humanity existence. Join us again next week on another edition of The Advocate. The advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now.